Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to tackle one of the Caesarian Romans uh, from Warlord Games, better known you might come across them as Late Republic Romans. So this is before the Republic actually became an empire, so you're looking up to about 58 BC. Any past that point you'd be looking at the more, you know, what we tend to think of as Romans, especially if you've been reading Asterix. <laughs> uh, these guys are a lot of fun. Uh, this fella came out of the SPQR box set, um, but of course, Romans are Romans, you know, so you'll find miniatures like this from a lot of different providers. Now I'm going to be sticking to Army Painter stuff today, uh, largely because I thought it would be interesting to stick to a single, um, what's the word, manufacturer, and Warlord and Army Painter have a pretty good partnership. So I figured, well, let's stick to what these guys sort of recommend and uh, see what we can come up with. So I've had a look into all of my <laughs> various sources, and uh, this is what I've come up with, and I'm quite pleased with the result. So I'll name all the paints in the description below, and without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now to begin with, I've sprayed him with a primer of gunmetal, and you might wonder why this instead of something like black or white. And honestly, in this case, because so much of him is going to be covered in metallic stuff, like his armor and his chain, for example, uh, I think this is going to be a better colour. On top of that, it's sort of similar to painting over grey, and then it's a nice mid-tone. So starting off, I've got my uh, tanned flesh, and just one of my regiment brushes here. All I'm going to do is go around and cover over his skin. And you'll see this covers quite well, but in some areas you're going to want to let this dry, give it about 5-10 well, minutes, come back and give it a second coat. Now just to quickly demonstrate, I do mention sometimes that you're going to want to put two coats on some areas, and here's a good reason why. I've gone ahead and I've put one coat over all of the skin on this dude, and you'll see there is a slight translucency to the paint, which means the colour underneath is going to show through. So you see there's those silvery grey blotches in some areas. We need to let this dry, give it about five minutes, because if you go ahead and just try and blot more paint straight over the top of that, What's going to happen instead is you're going to break the surface that's settling down. And instead of getting two coats, you know, a nice even layer, you're going to get weird, bitty, grimy looking stuff. So we'll give that five minutes, apply a second layer. This is what I mean by that. Now after our second coat of tanned flesh, this is what we've got. You see a nice, smooth colour. Uh, importantly, don't forget what I always forget. He has got toes, <laughs> so you're going to need to paint those too. Now we're going to move on and paint all the leather details, and to no great surprise, we're going to use leather brown to do it. Uh, this is actually a really nice mid-tone uh, mid brown colour, so I find it useful for lots of things. Leather, funnily enough, being one of them. What we're going to do, we'll start off uh, painting his sandals. That's obviously not too difficult to do. But when it comes time to paint his scabbard, just paint in the whole thing. Some of these details are going to be gold later, but you will find it much easier to just Blast the whole thing in brown, and then very carefully pick up the gold bits later, rather than trying to make sure that you don't hit uh, these bits right now. So his sandals, his belt, uh, at the back of his helmet here too, he's got a little sort of strap thing holding it on there too. Uh, I just do the whole thing in leather brown. Uh, some of that is his hair, but don't worry too much. It's not as if brown hair is uncommon. Now after a couple of coats of leather brown, all the leather details are done, and you'll see I haven't been terribly careful in some areas. Um, I've been quite generous with it, I've splattered over areas that are going to be gold, it doesn't really matter. Anything that we are going to paint later, we don't need to fuss around with trying to be perfect with. We're going to move on to painting his tunic now, and here you've got a couple of choices. Um, I'm going to use Banshee Brown, which is quite a pale brown, almost a beige. I'm going to use this to do all of his tunic. If you were doing uh, late, 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 late Republic, uh, then I had read in one of my Osprey books that they had actually uh, gone to red as a sort of uniform color for the Republic. So in that case, something like Dragon Red would be a good uh, choice for this. But all I'm going to do at this point, I want to do these guys... I want to say fairly standard, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go around and all of his tunic, there's not really very much of this, you'll probably find you will need two coats of this. 
Now after a couple of coats of Banshee Brown, his cloth is done, and we're ready to move on to his pilum. Now, wood details, you can paint pretty much any color you like. Uh, I'm gonna use Monster Brown for this, because I like the idea of a slightly more sort of processed looking wood. Uh, and this is very simple, just straight over all the areas that are gonna be wood. <laughs> no great surprise. This part's not terribly complicated, uh, if you are looking at some of his other equipment though, and you're not sure what might have been a similar color, uh, the box art, is particularly if you're playing from SPQR or Hail Caesar, uh, bearing in mind that a lot of that artwork has appeared in uh, Osprey books on the subject, so you'll tend to find they are accurate. Now at last comes the fun part. I've got my greedy gold. Just a little bit of water in my brush as usual, just to thin that out. And you'll notice when this goes on, it is quite translucent. So if we start at the front of his helmet here, you'll see it covers fairly well, but you are going to get some of that silver showing through. So as with all of our colors, we're going to come back and do a second coat of this. Let's just go around now. Uh, I would recommend when it comes time to do the uh, trim on like his, where we go, on his gladius and what have you. Um, you will probably want to go down to a smaller brush, uh, something like the character brush, to do these little strips of gold. Uh, but however you want to do it, around you go now. Two coats of greedy gold. So a couple of coats of greedy gold later, this is what we've got. And as I was painting the little clasp uh, holding together his armor here, I forgot that I had done the leather trim uh, on that part of his, his armor. So I went back and I finished that off. Now I've got some plate mail and what I'm going to do is just touch up any areas where I may have gone a little awry. Uh, you may ask why not gunmetal and honestly I think a little bit of variety in color. So if I've got some on my brush here I'm just going to flick it in some of the areas where I want the, the metal to look a little lighter. Uh, I'm also going to tidy up the peelum here and this bit should have been metal too. So, whoops, <laughs> that would have saved me a fair bit of time putting the old uh, Monster Brown up there. But any metal details now that you want to touch up, go ahead and a quick coat of this will do the job. And then finally, just a little bit of black and we'll do the horsehair plume on the top of his helmet. Now, after this stage is when you want to go back and do your cleanup. So if you've had any little oops moments, you know, things in the wrong place, or you just haven't quite covered as much as you would like, you'll find it saves time to leave those for the last stage. So let's cover this up, then we can get onto a shield. Now the shield here I have left off, and I've sprayed it separately with pure red. Uh, I got a little bit of a thumbprint on the, uh, on the boss there, but don't worry about that. I'll cover that over in a second. Uh, I find this much easier to do it this way, because You'll see this little roundel here. We're going to put just a wee bit of super glue in there and then jam it onto our legionary. Uh, this is, again, much faster, I think. And leaving the shield separate lets you, you know, reach all of the details that would probably be obscured while trying to paint the man. So I'm just going to assemble that now. And then once that super glue is set, you can get to painting it. Now I'm going to go back to greedy gold. And honestly, the. The shields I have seen probably the most variation on how these could, should, or would have been painted. Uh, commonly I've seen shields that were all completely red, because it makes sense to me that you would just paint the whole thing at once. But what I'm going to do is go around the whole rim of the shield using the edge of my brush, you might see, uh, and I'm just going to put down a layer of greedy gold there, and I will do this center thing and the boss as well, because I think while it is a little more time consuming, it also looks really cool. <laughs> so let's go ahead now and I will cover over those areas that I want to be gold. And then if you're anything like me and you had some whoops moments on the shield, just a little bit of pure red and that will clean that up nice and quick. Now with all of those details complete, it's almost time to go ahead and give them a strong tone shade. But I just want to really quickly touch on, when you assemble him, make sure that he can see over his shield. Uh, it might seem, you know, one of those things that's a silly detail. My fellow's got just his nose and eyes above the shield, which to me seems like it would be <laughs> the way to go. 
But because of the fact that the join on these guys, uh, it's kind of a little bit difficult to show off, but these plastic fellows have a lot of leeway in how you can assemble them. So do make sure you dry fit the shields first and get an idea of where that should fit. Now for my shade, I've mixed up two parts strong tone to one part of the quick shade mixing medium. It's going to soften out the detail a little bit uh, and mean that the strong tone is not quite so dark wherever we apply it. All we need to do now, I've got my large dry brush and we're just going to go nuts. Cover the whole model. Uh, you can be fairly generous with this, but just make sure that you are working it into all the recesses and you're going to cover the entire miniature. Uh, anywhere that you might struggle to reach, just, you know, Shift the model around a bit, get in there. And then once you've covered over the whole miniature, you're going to want to leave it probably about half an hour to dry. Now the beautiful thing with the mixing medium is that it will soften the shading effect without losing any of the depth. So you get, oh, it's just nice. It's so simple to do and it makes such a big difference. You could quite happily put them on the table like that, base them up, you know, put them in as part of a unit, but what we'll do is just a couple of little highlights, I think, to really set them off a bit more. So I've got here some, this is Barbarian Flesh, and the irony of painting a Roman with Barbarian is not lost on me. <laughs> but I've got now my character brush, just a little bit of paint on my brush. And what we're going to do is just a couple of highlights along places like the backs of his knuckles, um, his nose. Give me your nose, buddy. Go beep. You don't need to be particularly generous with this. Um, you know, you can do his toes, you can do curvature of his muscles, all that sort of stuff. It's up to you. However much you think is going to look good. And still using your character brush, just a little bit of brain matter beige uh, along the very edges of the uh, clothing. You'll be quite sparing with this because this will look very bright when it first goes on. Now you'll ask the question, what happens if I get to somewhere where it's difficult to highlight because of where the shield is? Simple answer, honestly, don't bother with it. <laughs> if you are struggling to reach an area because of the position of the shield, you're probably not going to see it terribly well on the battlefield anyway, so don't worry about it. And then just a wee smidgen, we've got Filthy Cape. Uh, again, such a wonderful name. <laughs> We're just going to do a few little lines on the very edges of the, what do you call it, horsehair plume. If you do make a mistake here, and you end up putting too much on, or it goes in the wrong place, all you need to do is let you know, keep painting it, finish off the highlights, and when you're done, go and hit it with a little bit of uh, dark tone, and you will find that helps soften it out a little bit more. That might be a bit much, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll get some uh, dark tone on there. Now, just while waiting for that to dry, what I'll do, I've got some bright gold here. And I'm not going to do much of this, honestly. I quite like the way that the helmet looks as it is. I don't want to highlight that. But I do want the shield boss to be just a little lighter. So I'm going to dab some in there. I'll just do along the spine of this. I have no idea what that part... Spine? I guess? I don't know. Shield research <laughs> has not been as important to me as color research, so any other bits that you do want to highlight, you know, if you fancy that, just a little bit of bright gold now, we'll tidy those up nice and sharp. Now what we're going to do is apply the shield decal. Now luckily Warlord has very kindly made sure that these are actually fairly simple to apply, because rather than being one huge solid piece, uh, they are designed so that they fit onto the odd shape of the, uh, the shield fairly well. So there's a little gap between these two areas on the... You see the little lightning details down there. You'll see them a bit closer in a second. <laughs> uh, these are designed so that they will fit onto the shape of this boss here and take the shape of the shield. So you shouldn't have to muck around too much with worrying about cutting and trimming and, you know, whole applications of microsole and so forth. All I'm doing is just soaking the uh, decal here. Got my big old brush and I'm just tipping as much water as I fancy. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I probably should have been a little bit more careful and gotten some fresh water to do this. But I think 
you know, because of the fact we have already shaded this shield, uh, a little bit of grunge <laughs> caked into the, uh, the decal is not going to matter too much. So I'm just going to keep adding water, soaking the backing paper. This will probably take a minute or so to lift off and be ready to use. So let's poke around at that. Now this will be much easier when you don't have to have a camera in front of you, I promise. So what I'm going to do is, now ordinarily I would use a brush for this, uh, but of course I'm trying to make sure that you can see what I'm doing at the same time. So gently sliding the decal off onto the surface of the shield, hoping it doesn't stick to my thumb in the process. There we go. Now let's quickly get some water and we can use that to slide it around. You'll see there is a little bit of a gap there for the shield boss to sit in. So I want to make that whole area wet so I can start moving this a bit more easily. And then just using the brush to gently maneuver this into position. Uh, like I said, the, the actual shape of it is designed to fit the shield fairly well, uh, which is nice. You know, it does make this a bit easier. Once it starts getting to the stage that I'm happy with its position, let's just poke that down a little and start drawing away some of the water with my brush. Now, after leaving the decal in the sun for about 20 minutes to dry and for the backing paper to shrink a little, what I've done then is just hit the whole thing with a quick spray of the anti-shine varnish, and this is what we've got. And honestly, I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> These guys are a lot of fun, very simple to do, and as you can see, it's not a huge number of colors. If you did want to do those highlights by just uh, skipping the quick shade mixing uh, medium, what you could do then would be to highlight those base colors again, you know, using what you'd already painted. You wouldn't necessarily need another color. But I do think the mixing medium is a pretty good investment, and it doesn't take much to highlight those, eh? And, oh, he's cool. I really like how he's turned out. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop base on him, and then let's see what it looks like when he's ready to hit the table. And then at last, with all of his bells and whistles applied, our Roman soldier is complete. And i got to admit, I actually really like the result there. Uh, I've used the Lowland Scrub, or Lowland Shrub, <laughs> tufts from the Army Painter too. Because uh, I think that little splash of green really helps sell the rest of the miniature. And we can add that without having to use another paint. Uh, all in all, this is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing the research and looking into you know different ways that this would have appeared. Uh, in particular, if you are looking at doing Very Late Republic, uh, I'll drop a couple of recommendations for books in the description below. So as always, any questions, feel free to drop them in the old comment box. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time and you will enjoy the rest of your day.